welcome to today's lecture on digitalization and its effects. The basic questions we will ask today is what are the characteristics of digitalization? Digital information and communication technologies, ICT as we know them today, are the result of a merger of three previously separated technological trajectories. On the one hand, there's storage, information storage technology that goes back to the cave paintings, Gutenberg's printing press was part of this technological trajectory. Second, there are communication technologies um, that includes also at the beginning smoke signals, um, pigeon post, but also the telegraph. And third of all, computation technologies. Uh, that includes the abacus as, as, as one of the first manual calculators. And all of these three now merge on the informational bit, on the binary digit. That's where the digitalization comes from. And we can seamlessly switch between one and the other functionality. Now the result of that are some very important characteristics with regard to the possibilities that we nowadays have in information processing. Digital information has characteristics that are different from analog information processes. Analog means like we, if they would not be uh, digitalized. Understanding these characteristics is very useful because once you understand them you will be able to make inferences about what will happen if a specific sector of society starts to embrace digital information. So these characteristics, they occur when you put information into digital networks. And that's what we will talk about today. I enlisted here 10 of them, and these are the 10 we which we will work with in today's lecture. That does not mean that these are the only ones. Uh, but at one point I had to stop, and I think these are uh, 10 of the 10 most important ones. So I will just now list them and then during the rest of the lecture we will go through them one by one. We will start with the digital footprint that is left behind when we process information in digital networks. Second, there's a phenomenon that's called timeless time. Third, the death of distance occurs with having information in digital networks. Fourth, uh, there's poorly directional information processing possible. Fifth, there's an inherent network structure when processing information in digital networks. Six, there are network externalities which have far-reaching effect with regard to the economic structure. Seventh, there are economies of scale that arise from digital content. Eighth, there is a media richness selection um, that you have the uh, power of choosing when, when processing information in digital networks. Ninth, there's exposure selection. So you're able to select how much you want to expose. And last but not least, there's what I call algorithmification for the lack of a better word. And that comes from the merger of the computational trajectory together with the communication networks trajectory. So we include artificial intelligence and pre-programmed algorithms into our information network logic. Let's start with the first one, the digital footprint. Have a look at this video to get a basic notion what it is all about. The digital footprint that is recorded with every digital step you take gives us very interesting insights about the behavioral patterns of individuals like we've seen in this video, but also about more bird's eye view societal behavioral patterns. For example, this animation here shows you when somebody on Twitter says good morning or buenos dias, buongiorno, guten morgen, and you can now use this to study society. For example, this shows you very clearly that people on the East Coast of the United States, they get up a couple of hours earlier on average than people on the West Coast. And that has nothing to do with the time difference. They really do get up earlier. And the digital footprint, you can think about that more like also really a, a footprint that is left behind. Because something that we learned a lot about after we had digital technology is human mobility. For example, if you check the right boxes on your Google account or rather you do not check them. What Google shows you here is uh, your entire mobility pattern for the last couple of months or years. And you can see where you, or rather where your mobile phone has been during that time. For example, you can see here 
that on November 17th, I've been moving around Davis, um, um, around all Davis. I have no idea anymore what I did in all of these different places, but I obviously did. Then on November 25th, I traveled to Buenos Aires and I had to go through New York in order to go to Buenos Aires. My wife even didn't know that I had to change planes in New York, but Google did. Uh, mentioning that, don't necessarily show this trick to your significant other and under no circumstances to your mom. Some very interesting conversations can arise after having collective access to your digital footprint. The fact that it is so easy and so cheap to create this digital footprint has also led to the tendency that generally people say, well, if you're in doubt, just, just record everything. For example, during the years 2014-15, there have been several incidents in the United States where there was serious doubt about the legal use of police force, which led to big protests and uprising. And the United States administration, what they did as a result, they just said, well, if we are really in doubt and it's not clear if police force was used according to the law or not, let's just record it. So that led to the fact that nowadays many policemen were these kind of body camps where they just basically record all of the action and since they're public official, the government just say, well, Record it and then we can see did you stick to the law or not. You can personally also use the digital footprint. For example, if you're in a long lecture or in a business meeting, there are apps around that allow you to sit in the meeting and everything, every time something interesting has been said, you just press the button and what the app does, it records the 15 seconds that just happened previously. Kind of funny, right? But technologically, of course, how that happens is the app always records everything. And when you press the button, it does not delete the 15 seconds that previously just happened. But with the result being that actually you can listen to a three hour business meeting or lecture and you just record the nuggets after they've been said. And you have a very concise, very interesting summary at the end. This is also based on the idea just just record everything. One thing that's very important to remember and what many people have a difficulty wrapping their mind around is that information actually always is physical and that leads to the fact that the digital footprint is actually inevitable. Information is always physical. What I mean by that, it, it needs a medium to be realized. So for example, if you speak face to face to somebody, your mouth moves the air molecules which molecules which leads to waves and these air waves these molecules then hit the eardrum of the other person so there's a physical carrier when information is in digital format there are different carriers could be, for example be that the information is represented in silicon it could be that the information is represented in photons in these light flashes that go through a fiber optic cable or through radio waves that go through the air. And once these are received, they are then decodified by our decodification hardware and software. So these are applications like MPEG, JPEG, MP3 and, and, and whatever you have. And at this moment, the information again is physical. It's really physically there. So you have two options now. Either you can tell it, delete it, or you can just say, well, keep it. But actually, it's, it's the other way around. It's not like information is ephemeral, especially not in, in digital, when information is digital. It is really there, and then you actually have to actively tell it to be deleted. Otherwise, you, know, you can just say, well, just stay there. I just use some different space to, to decode the rest and to record the rest. And if you have enough storage, you could just keep everything, you can keep the digital, this digital footprint. There are several web pages on the internet, which I invite you to look up, where you can inform yourself how difficult it actually is to delete your own digital footprint, the digital footprint that you left behind by using different services. Uh, sometimes it is impossible to delete it, even if you would delete your account, because you don't own your digital footprint anymore. You gave it away. You, you know these little boxes that you always scroll down and at the end you say, okay, I agree. Uh, what most of them say, they give us very important information on what happens with this digital footprint. And uh, in some services, online services that you use, you basically give your digital footprint away and then the company can use it for 
the rest of eternity to trade with it, to sell it to other people. And you don't own it anymore. So even if you delete your account, there's nothing you can do. Um, it's, it's, and so it's very important for all of us to be aware that we create this digital footprint and also uh, to think about which kind of digital footprint we want to leave behind and where. Because, you know, the future can be pretty uncertain and who knows maybe in 10 20 years you would like to get a job with an employer who or, or you might want to run for public office even if it's only locally uh, or, or you find a significant other who does not agree you know there are many uh, possibilities and, and, and uncertainties so we all want to be very aware about the digital footprint that we do leave behind